Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Luke Coutinho. I work in the space of integrative and lifestyle medicine. And today, this is actually the first time we have invited two very renowned and special doctors on board. Okay, we're on real and raw right now. And the reason we have Dr. Deerja with us and Dr. Ayush, Dr. Deerja is the head of physiotherapy in a renowned hospital. And so is Dr. Ayush. He's a diabetologist and MD in medicine. But it's something really exciting today. Dr. Deerja is currently COVID positive day four. And I feel bad stealing her time. But guess what? Have a look at her. She's glowing. Her oxygen <laughs> saturation levels are excellent. And she owes it to the amount of care she's taking for herself and the breathing exercises that she's doing. And she's going to teach us these breathing exercises today that can help millions of people out there. You may have a symptom, of course, always take medical advice. But today, these are simple breathing exercises that work on the simplicity of science and anatomy that can help you right now, no matter where you are. You may be in a COVID facility, you may be at home, you may have COVID, or you may be looking at prevention. But we always say that the simplest lifestyle changes and the power of your breath is something that a lot of us do not explore. So Dr. Deerja, thank you so much. Can you take a minute to introduce yourself? Uh, can you sure. please introduce yourself, what you do, what you study, and then we'll, drive, we'll uh, uh, move straight into the exercises. Right. Thank you so much, Luke, for uh, introducing me and having me on this video. The whole purpose of this is to help other people. And since I'm COVID positive, I'll tell you honestly, my saturation went down up to 95, 94. And with the exercises, what I've been doing, these are very simple, basic exercises. The people in isolation at home, even in hospitals, they can do these exercises and easily available stuff like balloon and water and the straw, they can do it. I'll just demonstrate how to do it. Because what happens generally in COVID-19, the fluid articulates in the lower areas of our lungs. Okay, So that leads to the discomfort and the saturation falling down rapidly. So if we are doing these exercises, we are expanding our lungs and we are not letting the fluid to articulate to uh, fix up down in the lungs and it cuffs it out and it comes out. So then the saturation improves. So easily accessible thing at home is the balloon. What we are doing with this is we are blowing out air against resistance so that it will create a positive and expiratory pressure in our lungs. This is similar to what we give like a ventilator in the hospital. So with this, if we are keep blowing it out and giving the resistance to our lungs, it's going to open the tiny air spaces inside the lungs and the saturation you will see magically it's rising with this simple technique. So I'll just show you, you have to blow it three times with a deep inspiration in and that expiration with the pressure in this. So how to do this? Just make sure that you're not using your accessory muscles. So we just have to use our the lung muscles and the diaphragm muscle for that. The other simple technique is just take water in a glass or a jar or a bottle and a simple straw easily available at home. We have to blow out balloons in the water like this. The bubbles, yeah, yeah, okay. So this so is one breath, right? You've taken one inhale yes. and through one whole yes. exhale, we're blowing bubbles yes. through the straw. Okay. Expiration should be longer than inspiration. That's the key, okay. real, key, key, key for that. So it's like, again, inhale, just do it three times uh, all together. So this is the gentle way of getting the resistance. 
like if people are not able to do this like the elderly at home are not able to do the balloon they can do this uh, making the bubbles in the water and they can have they can just imagine that they are blowing the balloon without the actual balloon just like this inhale it's like a first lip breathing this really helps the smaller alveoli in the base of the lungs to not collapse it keeps these exercises keep the lung airways patent these exercises keep the lung airways open and the expansion is there in the lungs so the moment they'll do this twice or thrice in a day and every time three three repetitions because we don't want muscle to be fatigued and tired because they're suffering from covid also so they have to take care that they have to give a break also in between and then do these exercises these are very simple techniques anyone can do it they will see the result and this is the whole purpose of making this and another one major point luke i want to add nowadays people are aware about proning right yeah. it's very very now has uh, come up in highlight reason being what is proning first is lying upside down on your stomach is a prone position okay right. when we when we lie down on our stomach upside down what happens because the major part of our lungs are located at the back side this many people are not aware of okay so if we lie down straight for a longer time like on our back like this if we keep lying down straight and when we are having covid we are going to compress the lung airways so expansion is not going to happen completely exactly yeah. and uh, and the unfortunate part is since it's covid so a lot of secretions are already coming in Right? right so if you're lying down straight we are going to be more breathless our saturation is going to be more down so in order to avoid it and in order to have a good expansion of lungs we should lie down upside down on our stomach right. that is going to increase the lung airways lung expansion and it's going to bring out the secretions with these simple exercises and lying down prone now the government has been also uh sending messages and showing that the demonstration of lying upside down on your stomach helps but make sure if you are a heart patient with the surgery and uh, of course pregnant female you are not supposed to do it perfect perfect i think that that's brilliant doctor and i like how you explained it because you know there are so many mixed notions about what is the correct position to sleep and most people lean to when we do diagnosis of people with sleep apnea and all their sleep problems all of them all of them have always been advised to sleep on their back apparently and i think it's amazing how you how, how you've integrated science and anatomy and it makes complete sense it makes complete sense what you're talking about so there are three exercises that dr d just spoken about one is a balloon and uh, you blow out into the balloon and again you take a deep inhale and try for the exhalation to be longer if you don't have a balloon you can mimic the same breathing exercise in a way that we call pulse breathing or you can imagine you're breathing that way the second is our favorite because as kids we were always told not to blow bubbles in our soda bottles or in our glasses but now we all have permission to do that and i think it's so simple and so powerful and the third is sleeping on our chests if we're not pregnant and if we don't have a heart problem or we've not gone through heart surgery and trying to sleep through that position and breathing for complete expansion of the lungs doctor i like what you suggested because a lot of people are going crazy with breathing exercises they're overdoing it thinking that the more they do the stronger their lungs are going to be so i like yeah let's see that what's your saturation i'll just show you it was 95 before now it has reached 90 Eight, 99 oh god 99 i can see 99 fabulous yes fabulous yeah and when when you got diagnosed you were at a saturation of 94 94 or 95 yeah okay. yeah yeah brilliant i i think this is leading by example and try it we lose nothing by trying these things now right now everyone's a victim of fear a victim of anxiety and like i always say you're a victim of fear and anxiety unless you take action you do something so start doing these things you know these things are so important they're the basics of science and anatomy and if we can do it and we can change our saturation levels at home again if you have symptoms this is not a replacement for your medical doctors or anyone these are things that can help us but like any doctor would advise you if you have symptoms if you have comorbidities please please go and see your doctors dr ayush since i have you on time online 
I would like you, you're seeing a lot of diabetic patients right now with COVID. Give me three of your top lifestyle changes or advice that you want, would want to leave with patients out there who are diabetic and going through the COVID right now. See, with COVID, basically the drugs that we are giving can cause uh, the sugar levels to increase. With an increasing right. level of sugar, the viral infection tends to spread further. The control mm -hmm. in the body becomes poorer. And patients then get confused that we are getting very high sugars. We are not eating anything random. We are not eating anything sweet. So right. what I would like to advise is that the patient should decrease the meal size and it should distribute the meal size into small portions. So instead of having six, uh, instead of having three big meals of a big breakfast, a big lunch or a big dinner, they should divide them into six meals with three small meals and three me mini meals. All right. So those include three breakfast and three mid snacks. So that way the patient is not hungry whole day. He is not feeling like I have not eaten anything and not I'm, I might, my sugar might go low. But with the regular intervals, with eating regularly, they will also keep rejuvenating themselves. They'll keep eating something and the sugars will also not jump very much. I can't, yeah. You understand? Yeah. So that is one of the important things that I'd like to let them know. Secondly, uh, while with the breathing exercises, people tend to overdo them. They tend to do over... They have not done enough. Or they have not exerted enough. So I would like to let them know that slowly and steadily doing any exercise is better than extra number of repetitions. So number of repetitions is not important, but doing it in the right way is very important. As ma'am has been very specifically telling that the inspiration duration should be smaller than the expiratory duration for the blowing out exercises. For right. exercises where we are taking in, there we have to equalize the duration. So that's the second tip regarding that. And thirdly, that any diabetic patient should regularly check their insulin and regularly check their sugar levels. If their sugar levels are under control, so once daily is good enough. If their sugar levels are not meeting their target, then it is advisable that they do it once in the morning, empty stomach, and once two hours after uh, meal, so that they should know how the body is responding to the meals that they're taking and if any modification needs to be done accordingly. Perfect. People cannot go out right now. So my last third tip will be to do exercises at home. Ma'am is an expert in exercises where patients cannot move. She has been dealing a lot with patients who have got their knees transplanted. And so those exercises where patients do not have to even stand and yet they can burn their calories and improve their output can be done. So, you know, ma'am has a lot of knowledge that you can ask her to give more inputs about. So, those will be the, my three basic tips so that everything can be at least taken care of. And whatever expert opinion they might require, then the family physician or the doctor who is nearer to them, who has taken care of them, will always tell them better because diabetes needs a lot of individualized care rather than we giving you know, general concepts because not everybody has the same body. Thank you, Dr. Ayush. I, I appreciate your holistic, you know, approach towards disease. And I think that that's what allows people to recover. And Dr. Deerja and Dr. Ayush, of course, we're going to steal some more time later on a specific Thanks. video because I want this to be very specific to people learning the breathing exercises that y'all are demonstrating right. and talking about. Uh, Dr. Deerja and Dr. Ayush, right. thank you so much for being on this particular show because we believe it's the simple okay. things in life that work. And y'all are adding so much of value by putting this out there. So much of value by putting it out there. And I think Dr. Jija, you're a living example of being COVID positive, but you're out there you. helping people, you know, spreading the information that can help us through these dark times. But thank you so much for your time. And thank I will you speak so to much, you. again very, very soon. Thank you. Yeah, get well soon. Thank you. You already, you already you. look fine. You, you don't look like <laughs> you're going through anything, to be quite honest. So something's working for you. Really. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.